How's it going, Home Bar Heroes? And welcome to the show, Home Bar Hero, where we show you how to be the hero of your home bar. Gee, that's a tongue twister. My name is Brian Blackmore, and I'm a graduate of the Connecticut Bartending School, and I love home bars. I don't, I don't think there's anything cooler, personally. A place where you can hang out, entertain, serve your friends, and just have a good time. There's no space like it in the house. If you're contemplating getting a home bar, absolutely do it. But you don't need something this big to have a home bar. All you need are a few simple tools, and I'm gonna go over those tools right now for you, so even if you have something small, you could do it yourself. The first thing you're gonna need is a shaker. Shakers come in a variety of styles, they come in a variety of sizes, sometimes you'll get them for free with like promotional liquor bottles and stuff like that. This is just your average cocktail shaker. Uh, it's got a little cap on the top. This cobbler shaker just comes in half like that. Fill it with ice, put your cocktail in there, close it up, shake it up, and you've got everything right here. You could pour it from this little spout. I prefer to use a Hawthorne strainer and pour it right over the top like that, but totally up to you. A good shaker, whether you're doing something like a cobbler, whether you're doing something like a Boston shaker with glass, or even tin on tin, they make good shaker, is a necessity for your home bar. The next thing, a bottle opener. Now I know you've got one of these probably lying around the house somewhere. This is a speed opener. Uh, you may not need a speed opener for your home bar unless you plan on having a lot of people or a party and you're hanging out behind it and you want to pop open bottles quick. This is nice to have, fits easy in your pocket, you carry it around, and you can do cool tricks with it. We'll cover that in a later video, but I love a nice speed opener. This, a juicer. You're going to need a juicer. Stuff like margaritas, a lot of different fruit-based drinks, you're going to want to have a solid juicer. You'll see my juicer is beat up a little bit. Try not to get the ones covered in enamel if you can. If you could find one that is, you know, die cast or stainless steel, something like that. You're going to want that over this enamel type juicer because it, uh, it starts to crack, it starts to peel, and you don't want to find paint chips in your drink. Uh, I'm going to get a new one of these soon. Next up is a muddler. This muddler is great for stuff like mojitos, really kind of getting stuff muddled up, mashed in there. Now with a muddler, you'll see a lot of bartenders really kind of jamming it in there. That's not what it's for. It's already got these spikes on the bottom of it. All you need is a light press, baby. Light, smooth, easy. You don't have to go hard with it. Be gentle, all right? Good muddler is gonna allow you to make a lot of those mint-based drinks, a lot of stuff that if you wanna, you know, if you wanna get a little flavor in there, a little oils, mm, mix it up. Like I mentioned before, this is a Hawthorne strainer. This strainer does not have a gate on it. Some of them will have a gate that can open and close and allow you varying levels of, of flow here. This one does not. I love to throw it over the different types of shakers that I have. Just allows you to get everything out of the glass more, uh, more easily than a cobbler shaker. And the, the flow is nicer here. Plus you can control it a little bit better with your finger there. So you really don't need a gate because you've got the, uh, you got the motion there. If you are making a muddled drink and you don't want all the mint and stuff in there, you gotta get a Hawthorne strainer, baby. They look cool too. This is the this is the one that a lot of people see and they're like, what the hell is that? It's got a spring, it's got all kinds of got a weird, weird shape, but necessity. Next up is your jig or jigger. These measure one ounce and two ounces, and some of them even have half and quarter ounces. Uh, I believe there's there's a brand out there called OXO that actually has the, the measurements on it. This one just does one ounce or two ounces, and I know that if I need a half ounce, I fill this up halfway. The jig in the bartending world isn't always used. You will see a lot of people free pouring. Free pouring used to be much bigger. Now because people are so interested in, in craft cocktails, you want to have the consistency. And if you want a consistent cocktail, you've got to have the measurements right. It's just like any recipe. You don't just free pour flour into a pie. Plus, the jig is one of those little tools that allows you to do all kinds of different bar tricks with it. You pop out something like a lime, you could just catch it right in the jig. Cups and balls. It's a cool trick tool and also a necessity. A little cutting board is gonna allow you to cut up things like your limes. You don't wanna get stuff all over the bar. You don't want your bar to get all nasty. Having a good cutting board is gonna allow you to cut stuff up, have half a lime, leave it over there, bring it back, squeeze it into a margarita. You get the point. Now this is one that everyone forgets, but I'm not gonna forget it. A cleaner, in this case, it's the new Mr. Clean Clean Freak Deep Cleaning Mist. I think this stuff is awesome. 
and a bar rag. This is a napkin I stole from Guy Fieri's restaurant. Keeping your bar clean, sparkling clean, fresh, is the way to go. You don't want a sticky, nasty bar. Your friends don't want to come over and put their elbows on your bar and have it be all gross. Keep your bar clean. Keep the people who are drinking at your bar happy. It's easy. The last thing I have is a little notebook right here. This is just a little tiny moleskin notebook and this is where I write down all my cocktails, some of my super secret recipes I keep in here. They're not that secret. But if you make a good drink, you're gonna wanna write that down. You're gonna wanna have it saved, whether you save it in your phone, or whether you save it in a little notebook, you can look back on it and make that cocktail again. Once again, important to keep the recipes right. So you don't wanna be free pouring your drinks and have too much booze, not enough sour, not enough sweet. You're gonna mess up everything, man. Get it right. Now there are a lot more tools of the trade for bartenders. These are just the simple basic tools that I covered that'll get you started. If all you had were these tools, you would be totally set. You don't need anything else except maybe ice. By the way, get yourself an ice bucket or something. I don't have an ice maker under this bar. At some point I may, but right now a good ice bucket is going to save you from having to run upstairs in my case and get ice. Thank you guys for watching Home Bar Hero. Once again, my name is Brian Blackmore. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. And I wanna know, what is your favorite cocktail to make behind your home bar? What are you drinking?